Carolyn Doobie here. What's the play for today? Well, today I am gonna color within the lines. I am gonna do neat and precise addition of color to a print. And if you're thinking, wow, that doesn't really sound like me, you are so right. And as I put the color on here, I'm not actually really doing it precisely. I'm not doing it neatly and I'm not staying within the lines, but it doesn't show, it just looks like I did. And I'm gonna share with you how I go about doing that. What I've got here are ink tense pencils. And what I'm doing is just drawing with the pencil inside the white area. Not even being super precise about it, it just needs to be somewhere within that white space. Now the thing about ink tense pencils is that they react to water. So it can look like a pencil right now, but if I brush just a little bit of water over it, it makes it look almost like a watercolor. You get all this wonderful, vibrant, intense color. The more of the pencil that you put on there, the more intense the color is when you put the water on top of it. So if you want a little bit softer, you put a little less color on with the pencil. And if you want more, you can even come back with that pencil and add a little bit more to it, just like what I did there. Coloring within the lines is something that is a challenge for me. And the thing about this that's so forgiving is should I happen to go outside the line, one of two things is gonna happen. I'm either gonna like it and you're just gonna get this little bit of shading and shadow right along the edge, or two, I'm gonna be able to pull it right up. You see, if that ink tense pencil goes over onto the gray and I don't want the color there, if I just come in with clean water and a brush, I can actually brush away any of the color on the gray that I don't want, basically erasing it. But one thing to know about ink tense pencils is that once they are dry, the color doesn't come up very easily. Unlike watercolor pencils, where the color will reactivate if you get it wet even after it's dry, ink tense pencils are a little different. Once it's dry, it's a lot harder to move that color around. So how did I make this? Where did this paper come from? Well, this is a plain old piece of cardstock, nothing special. And then I simply stenciled my overlapping heart stencil from Stencil Girl Products on there. Now you can stencil with a cosmetic sponge or brush, however you want to do it. If I know I'm going to do a whole big thing like this, I like to do it the fast and easy way, the impatient way. And that is using a gel plate. In a video that I've shared previously, I show you how to take stencils from my overlapping shapes collection and use a gel press plate to make some very speedy prints with them. And I'll have that link down below for you. So since these are overlapping hearts, how can I tell which one's in front, which one's behind? How do I know which ones to color in entirely and which ones to leave gaps on? Well, I'll let you in on a little secret. They can be whichever you want. You can make whichever one you want to be in front and whichever one you want behind it. So let's take the heart I'm gonna work on right now. This one is a purple pencil, so it's gonna be a nice, dark, deep color here. I am gonna color the entire heart with the purple. So I'm gonna do the entire shape in it. I'm not gonna skip any areas of the purple. By doing that, that will make that purple heart one that's on top. Now, once I get the water on here, once I really make that purple pop, then you'll see how I handle the heart that's behind it and what makes it look exactly like the one behind it. But first I've gotta move this purple all around. When you're working in a darker color, the little white edges tend to show a little bit more than with a lighter color. So I just need to move that color around a little bit more, fill that in, and now I'm gonna work on the big heart behind it. And I want you to notice as I come along with the pencil, as I'm coloring in, anywhere where I come to an intersection where there's already a color, I just skip over it. I don't put any of the color there. That way they won't mix and blend. And if you're thinking I'm not coloring very carefully, you are right, I am not. I'm just making sure that I've got lots of that ink tense on there so I can get a pink that really pops here. And notice as I'm coming along with the water, I'm skipping over the other colors. I'm only doing the pink. I'm not messing with the purple. I'm gonna go right over it. And that is what makes it look like that purple one is in front of the pink one. Now, if you're thinking, wow, this is gonna take a lot of planning and thinking about which one's in front and which one is where, I'm gonna let you know that I don't think that hard about it. I just know that whichever one I fully color in, that's the one that looks like it's on the top. So let me show you what I mean as I go down and do the next heart. And I'm loving that pink so much, I think I'm gonna use that pink down here on another one. Because the entire heart on this one is gonna be done in pink, 
That means it's going to look like it's the one on top if you can see the heart completely in one color. Oh, and by the way, as I add the water here, I want you to notice what I do with my finger because I kind of went over the lines a little more than what I wanted. And if that happens, you simply make sure it's wet and then wipe it up. I just use my finger to do it. But if there's a bunch of it, I might use something like a little bit of a paper towel. All right, so I've got the red heart there, the pink heart there. It is fully showing, so that means we can see it completely. That means it's on top. So I'm gonna come over here to this heart and I'm gonna do this one completely in one color. And do you wanna know how I decided to do it that way? Well, if there's no color already behind it, then I am gonna do it completely in that color. Yeah, that's completely my process here. If there's nothing behind it color-wise, then that heart gets to be all one single solid color, no interruptions, no breaks, no intersections in its color. And that's gonna make it look like it's the one that's on top. So now notice as I come down and do the hearts around this one. As I add color to them, I'm gonna skip over the intersections where there's already some color. I'm gonna do this both with the Inktense pencil and the water. That way the colors stay very much in their own heart. They aren't gonna mingle and mix. And that is what makes it look like one is behind the other. And then I just repeat this over and over again with whatever colors I feel like grabbing until all of the hearts are filled in. Now let's skip forward here to where I've got just a couple of them left to do. These two hearts are gonna look like they're behind other ones because I'm not gonna do the entire heart in that color. Like I'm not gonna do orange over the whole thing. I'm gonna skip over the intersections where there's blue or red, both with the pencil and the water, so that way it looks like it's behind the blue one, behind the red one. Now this isn't carefully planned. I didn't think this orange one must be behind the others when I started this. I just grab pencils and fill stuff in and some will naturally end up in front of and some will naturally end up behind others. When I started this, the intention was is that I would make some colorful hearts here to put onto a quick card, to be able to just cut a rectangle out of this, turn it into a card so I could send it off to a friend. And the plan is starting to shift now because with all of those colors, I realize I want another layer on here. I want to put a little something more on it. But in order to get that layer on, I'm going to need this to be completely dry. So I let this dry and then I came back and I brought in a pen. I'm going to use that pen to do some very little scribble journaling inside each one of these hearts in each area of color. The writing that I'm doing, I am actually thinking about my friend. I'm thinking about our friendship. I'm putting those ideas in there. I'm writing it in there. But if you feel like, wow, I can't quite read what she's writing, never fear. Neither can I. I'm not worried about punctuation. I'm not worried about grammar. I am just getting those feelings, those thoughts onto there. And the other thing that's a little extra tricky about this is how many curves there are to this. To make it go around the heart and stay in that narrow area, you'll notice that I'm turning the paper a lot. And I highly encourage you to do that when you're doing it. Make that paper work for you. Let it move instead of you having to twist yourself into a pretzel to go around those curves. And you'll notice that I was just at the top of that green heart. And now I'm going to come down to the bottom. Yep, I didn't do it continuously. I'm doing it out of order. Simply because it's what's most comfortable as I'm turning the page. And that's the cool thing about scribble journaling. It's not like there are a bunch of rules you have to follow. You can do it any which way you want. So as I was finishing up the scribble journaling, I realized I have a little bit of a quandary. My plan was to cut part of this up and turn it into a card to send to a friend. But I'm loving the whole thing. I don't want to cut it up. So I'm sitting on the fence. Whether or not I just want to put a mat around it and give it as a gift, or do I want to make one really big card the size of a piece of paper and send that to her? And hey, if you want to help me decide, let me know in the comments which you think I should do. Should I put that mat around it and give it as a gift to her? Or should I make a really big card and mail that to her? And I really appreciate your help because I am truly sitting on that fence. And I also appreciate that you spent this time here. Thank you so much for joining me for today's play. I really appreciate you being here. And if you've enjoyed this video, if you've had fun, you found it useful, I'd so appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. And of course, if you want to see more of my videos, hit that subscribe button. That way you'll know as soon as I've got a new video out. Thanks for letting me be a part of your colorful journey. Bye.